Okay. Hey. Um, so this is a twin flame video. I usually I'm trying to get more comfortable with making these videos because a lot of times I don't like talk about it and I feel weird about it, but I know it's gonna help some people because spirit keeps telling me that there's not a lot of twin flames out here who are actually twin flames making videos. Um, and so they're giving information that works for a soulmate, but it doesn't work for a twin flame. And if you're an actual twin flame whose path is not to, you know, make YouTube videos and stuff, you might be misguided if you come across some of these twin flames on here that aren't. And so since I'm a content creator, I also co create content on Quora. I should link my Quora, actually. I don't know why I don't do that. Anyway, I also create content on Quora, so check that out. I think it's the same name on there. I'm pretty sure it is. Maybe art is at the end. And, yeah, but I feel like it's one of my responsibilities to share my journey and some of the trials and triumphs and tribulations <laughs> that come with it. I'm not what they call in union. I don't even care for the the idea of union, I feel you like union doesn't happen until you die, truly. I do. Um, you get closer to them, you know, but I would have said union. Um, but things, a lot of things have transpired. The last video I did, I talked about how he was putting his hands on me. It was fucking crazy, y'all. And I know that might sound crazy. And like an abusive, narcissistic person, I'm like, he didn't hurt me or nothing. Okay? But that can't happen again. Y'all understand? And it won't. I will never let him do that shit again. Never. I don't do that. I've never, okay? I've never been with nobody who's ever put their hands on me like that. Never. That's not me. I'm not that girl. So that shit would never fucking happen to me. Um, and like I said, it wasn't like he was trying to hurt me. And I know it wasn't really hurtful. It was just aggressive. And I don't like that aggression, that type of aggression. But since then, a lot of things have changed. We've been talking more and more. One of the biggest problems that I had with him was he was so mean to me. And the thing about twin flames is they mirror each other. Sometimes it's in the opposite way. And he mirrored me in the opposite way by being too mean because I was too nice. I was too much of a people pleaser. I let people walk over me too much like I'm a doormat. I let people get away with things that I didn't like. And I did not set my boundaries and stay firm in them with a lot of people. A lot of that is childhood trauma. A lot of the issues I have come from childhood trauma. That's the unfortunate part. My parents are narcissistic. And they grew up in toxic homes and spread that toxicity to their children. Okay? So, I have to unlearn a lot of things, okay? And I needed to stop being so much of a people pleaser. And since then, I've been much less of a people pleaser. I've been being more firm in my boundaries. I've been being more honest to people when I don't like something. When I don't want you to do something, I say something. When I don't like something, I say something. I even lie sometimes. Now, I used to be so afraid of lying to people, but now I sell white lies to people when... They just don't want to respect my boundaries. For instance, there was this guy who was talking to me and I wasn't really feeling him like that. I actually didn't even want to talk to him. So that's still something I need to work on. But we were talking for a while and eventually he was starting to ask for my number. And I told him I don't have a phone. <laughs> even though I'm recording on my phone right now. Because I just knew that if I told him I had a phone... He wouldn't leave me alone about the number. And I just didn't feel like going through that no more. I was already tired and I didn't even want to talk in the first place. So I'm different than I was before. No more of that people pleaser shit. Even when I talk to 20, I get tired of word twin flame. <laughs> even when I talked to 20 a few days ago, the other day, I don't remember. I was yelling and cussing at him. I didn't give a fuck. I was never, I've never been like that to him. Yelling, cussing, being being real. Not like cussing, like just deranged, crazy argument type cussing. But you know what I'm saying? Like when you're having like a heated discussion with somebody, sometimes you get to cussing and yelling and shit. That's what I was doing, okay? That's what I was doing. 
I wasn't playing the nice Ayana no more. I've never been like that to nobody. He brings out a different side for me. But the thing is, it brought out other things for me. Even with my friend, I recently had a little tiff with her because I had to explain to her a boundary that I had, something that I didn't like. And we had an issue with that, unfortunately. But that's a whole, I don't want to throw her all her business out there and shit. But that's, that's just me not being afraid to set my boundaries and be firm in them and be honest about them. In the past, I used to not do that shit. I used to just let that shit go. I let people talk to me any old fucking kind of way. Or I try to figure out why they act the way instead of just saying, I just don't fucking like it. I don't care why you do it. I don't like it. I don't like it. And that's the part that I need to be more into. And I've been learning that. I've been learning that. After 20, I learned it before him, but he really like set that shit aflame on that day that I explained kind of vaguely maybe in the last Twin Flame video. Because I needed to learn to not be so damn nice. I needed to stop being so nice. I can't just let people walk over me. People did that when I was doing Twitter spaces, right? I let people just say, I let things I didn't like go on too long. And I was too busy trying to psychoanalyze them instead of just putting my fucking foot down. And that's something I got to work on. Even with not wanting to be honest with people, fully honest with people, because I'm afraid they might not like what I got to say. Even with my readings, that's why I stopped. I closed my, um, I closed my gigs almost a year ago was because I felt like I wasn't being, first of all, I was distracted in the home I was in, but I also felt like I wasn't being fully honest because I was afraid of losing business or whatever, or people not liking what I had to say, even though it was the truth, even though it was the truth. And I did still end up telling them the truth, but I felt like I kept trying to sugarcoat it too damn much. And I shouldn't do that. I shouldn't do that. They're coming to me for the truth. And so I need to share the truth as it is, okay? I was not speaking my truth and not being in my truth. And that's something I've been trying, been working on doing more now. I've been letting that kind, over the top, nice side fucking die because it needs to fucking die. So thank you, 20, for that. Maybe the methods were a little fucking crazy, but it still helped. And now, since then, a lot of things have transpired. We've been talking more and more. I've been more honest about the things that he does that I don't like. So he's just been hearing a bunch of complaints. <laughs> but that's because for years, y'all, I've known this man for almost three years now. For years, I hadn't told him nothing about how I felt, like how bad I felt about some of the things he did or some of the things he would say or how he would treat me. I wouldn't tell him nothing. And because I ain't tell him nothing, I, all of them things would go unheard. So now I'm at a point where I'm trying to be more honest and open about the stuff that makes me feel bad and the more that i've been doing it the more freedom i feel i feel so much more free hallelujah because beforehand i would be so filled with resentment and, and feeling bad about things that i should have said or didn't say before and i should have i should have said but now i'm moving past that i'm moving to a better way of thinking and being Okay. And a new thing that I've noticed, which was in the video that I already post. I don't know which one's coming first. Probably that one. But I now realize I over explain things too much. I over explain things because of trauma. My parents didn't care about how I felt. They didn't care about the things that were troubling me. They were unfair to me many times. Even when they were in the wrong, they didn't care or listen or hear me out. And so because I felt like I was being unheard, I kept trying to reiterate what I felt over and over and over again. Over explaining things, saying the same thing over again. And I do that even out, I did that even outside of my parents. I did that with my friends. I do that on my YouTube videos sometimes. All right. I always feel like I'm trying to sit here and prove somebody. And even with all the efforts, it still doesn't feel like enough. And that's a problem. When I feel like I'm explaining myself perfectly, I feel like I'm still not explaining myself well enough. And that shouldn't be that way. 
it shouldn't be that way. So I had to undo that trauma thinking, those trauma patterns. I had to undo that so I can learn to communicate more effectively to get my point across so that people could understand me without being drawn out and bogged down by me repeating the same shit like a broken record. I even do that with 20. I feel like I keep telling him the same problems that I have over and over and over again. Like he ain't heard me the first fucking time. But it's because I still feel like I'm not, it's not being fulfilled. And I'm tired of always feeling like the shit I desire and the things that bother me are not being fulfilled. Instead of doing that, I need to just move fucking on. Just move on. Let it go and move on. If I'm in a, a situation or environment where I feel like despite my explanation, I'm not being heard, I'm not being respected, or they're not caring about how I feel, then I need to learn to let that shit go. And I need to learn to stop fighting for love. And that's the problem that I used to have because I used to feel like I had to fight for love from my parents. I used to feel like I had to fight for love and appreciation from my friends. I used to feel like I had to fight all the fucking time. All my life I had to fight type shit. And like it's like... I shouldn't be fighting that much. I need to stop fighting. I'm fighting myself and I'm fighting the people around me trying to prove myself over explaining. So I'm done with the over explaining shit. Just like he under explains shit. Under explaining stuff way too vague. I don't know what he got going on in his childhood, but I'm pretty sure he probably wasn't heard in some way, shape or form. And I notice with men, a lot of times when they're not heard, they just don't fucking talk. I notice that's a common thing with men or the divine masculine. When they feel like their desires are not being met or nobody's caring about how they feel or what the fuck they got going on, they just don't talk no more. they very vague. They don't explain nothing. They don't explain their feelings. They shut that shit off. Bug. It was a bug flying around. <laughs> anyway, those are the things that we're going through right now. Too vague and too much lying too much lying he lies too fucking much and then when i face him with the fucking fact that i know he's lying he still lies about it i don't know what the fuck that is but i think it might be because i feel like i need to be too damn honest all the time and i need to stop being so fucking honest i'm gonna be real with y'all all right and i ain't even trying to say this to brag i tend to track a lot of men i'm pretty okay <laughs> I look better in person. <laughs> Let me stop though. I look good on video too. But <laughs> I attract men. And sometimes that's just fucking annoying. I don't want to be talked to. I don't want to be bothered sometimes. No, I don't want to give you my fucking number. But some men just don't know how to stop. They just want to keep going. So sometimes I just need to learn that it's okay. Just fucking lie. They don't need to know the truth. That man, that was a man I was talking to the other day. I mentioned the other video. A man I was talking to the other day, I didn't want to really talk to him. I should have said that, but that's okay. I know better now. And then he wanted my number. And I was like, I don't want to, I don't have a phone. I didn't tell him that. He thought that's what I said. I said, I don't have my phone. But I guess he thought I said, I don't have a phone. And so he said, you don't have a phone. And I just went with it because fuck it. Yeah, I don't have a goddamn phone. Because I don't want, I don't want you to have my number. I ain't say that, but that's how I feel. I just don't want to keep talking to people. I don't want these men. I had to tell him, I just want to keep to myself right now. I don't want to be bothered. And that's the people, the people pleaser are me dying by me saying that because the old people pleaser are me probably would have been like, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I don't want to talk to nobody right now. Leave me alone. Okay. I had to do that. I have to do that now. Men keep trying to talk to me and I don't want to talk. So I just be like, I don't want to talk. I'm, a I'm doing that more now. I'm doing it more now. But old me never used to do that. Even if I do want to talk, I don't want to talk to you. So I'm going to just say, I don't want to talk. Keep it simple. I don't have to be honest with everybody all the time. Everybody don't get out to know everything. And sometimes I'm too honest. And that's something I've been working on too. Too honest, telling too much. I don't need it. You don't need to know all my business. <laughs> you don't need to know all my business. So I don't need to share everything, all right? That's how I'm feeling. That's the point I'm at right now because I don't want to keep doing that. I don't want to keep having the same struggles with my twin. I be mad at him and shit 
But I be doing the same shit he doing in a different way, in the opposite way. We do things kind of opposite, which is crazy, which makes kind of sense because I'm a Capricorn. He's a Sagittarius. And semi-sextile placements, especially when the elements are kind of op opposing in a way, they tend to be kind of opposite. So it's like we mirror ourselves in the opposite way. But um, anyway... There's still a lot of struggles with me and my twin. One thing I don't like that he's doing right now is he seems so unwilling to help me with anything. And I just didn't understand that for a long time. But then I had to look within myself because I know how the shit works at this point. After all these years, I know how the shit works. I had to look within myself to see why would he not want to help me. And part of it is because I don't, I used to struggle. I, I still have those issues a little bit now, but it's a lot better. I struggle with feeling like I don't deserve help. I'm not worthy of what I have to offer. I should just give everything away for free. I should just do everything for free. And look where it's got me, y'all. Poor as hell in my car. <laughs> I lack severely in my self-worth. The worth, not even just worth as in like being worthy of help, but worth as in I have the, the tools and I have gifts that I can profit on and I don't feel like I can profit on it because I lack that worth. I lack the idea that I'm good enough to be invested in. Especially with my like my readings, y'all, my readings, my therapeutic talk sessions. There was a point I closed all the gigs because I felt like I just wanted to give the information away for free. And that's nice and all, but it's like damn, Ayana, you got to put a dollar sign on something. Everything don't got to be free. You're worth something. And I am worth something. I should be helped. I need help right now. So why am I not worthy of being helped? Why do I feel that way about myself? And I always help people. I help people too much. And that's the other part. He don't want to help no fucking body but his family. He don't want to fucking help me. But I help too fucking much. I be helping people when I'm in need of help. And I ain't going to sit here and regret it because I do still feel like that was kindness in my heart. But it was even a point where I was at a McDonald's one day. I'm only working with like 20 something dollars. Somebody walking around the McDonald's, he needed some food. He asked me if I can buy him a coffee or something. And I didn't, but I bought him food. I bought him a burger and a fry. I don't even have money, barely my damn self. And I bought him some. But you know what? He came at a point where he came to me after I had just read something in, in a Buddhist book where it said it's hard to help people when you're in need of help also. And I thought that came at the right time. So I just decided to do it anyway. But I still keep doing that. Like I'm still keep trying to help people when I'm the one who's in need and help. And I did that more than just that one time where I kept trying to help and be a helping hand and helpful when I was barely able to walk, when I had no fucking money, when my car can barely drive, I'm barely getting anywhere, I'm barely eating any goddamn food, and yet here I am still trying to give more energy when I barely have any damn energy myself. And I wonder why 20 is showing me this way, showing me I can't help you, I don't want to help you. I, I'm not worthy of help. All the shit that I already am and don't feel about myself, over helping, not worthy of help. I ain't gonna lie though, that shit still don't sit well with me, but I have a different perspective on it. I haven't been helping nobody now. I ain't helping no fucking body. Nobody's been asking me for help, thank goodness. But if somebody does, I'll be like, I can't help you because I can barely help my goddamn self. I can barely help my goddamn self. So I ain't been helping nobody. I ain't gonna help nobody. Because I need fucking help. I need help. And I told him I feel a way. I feel a way about the fact that I told him I was basically starving, y'all. And I really mean that shit. I was sick. I was feeling sick, y'all. My stomach was hurting. I had a breakdown to eat raw beans. Literally soaked not beans lentils and legumes i had to break down and eat them shits because i ain't had no food in my system 
And I told him, yo, I'm hungry. Can I cook at your crib? All I got was a no. How hard is it for you to open your home to me just to cook for a little bit of time? I feel the type of way about that. And I told him that because I should tell him that. And I don't give a fuck if he's like, I don't think he's going to do this now because he's been working on that shit. But still, I don't give a fuck like in the past where he used to be like, well, we could just cut this off or we don't got to talk or I don't know. Always just cutting that shit off. And I used to be so terrified of that shit. That was old me. I ain't fuck that. I don't care. Cut me off. At this point, I want to cut your ass off. That's how I be feeling sometimes. I still love him and all that. But he get on my fucking nerve lately. He's been irritating as fuck. But I've been trying to see it in a way that I need to still work on myself too. I can't just sit here and point the fingers. I have to break down and be honest with myself and realize how can I be mad at somebody who's just reflecting me me as difficult as it is sometimes as annoying as it is sometimes as awful as it seems sometimes I can't be mad when it's just reflecting who I am who I am in the opposite way so I try to have my patience I try to be patient I try to be understanding and I try to stay humble and understand that I can't just point fingers all the time and I have to see it as a way of growth. I'm working on my worthiness, my self-worth. I'm working on my desire to always help fucking people even when I don't have the energy to help. I'm working on my communication and over explaining things. I'm working on being a people pleaser and being too fucking nice when I don't need to be nice. I'm working on just lying sometimes when the lie won't hurt anybody. I'm working on it all. But that's all I got to say about that. I hope you found some value in this video. I do. And if you want to help me not starve, <laughs> please check out the description box below. If you want to serve, it's done. I specialize in twin flame readings. I can see a picture of you and whoever you think your twin flame is, and I can tell you if you're all a twin flame or not. Easy. Easy. Okay? I'm going to work through this. And if you're a twin flame, work through it too. Know that your twin flame loves you on a soul level, and he will or she will never give up on you. They will never give up on you. And they'll never leave you behind. So just continue to see yourself in them. And work on yourself and see how they transform themselves. There was one thing I forgot to mention, y'all. This is important. Amongst all of this, there got to a point where I had given up. I said, I'm going to give up. I'm done. Because I was so tired of the struggles I was so tired of the constant cruelty and meanness coming from him. And I just cried so hard. And I said, I'm so done with him. I'm over it all. I can't take this anymore. I can't take the pain anymore. I don't want this anymore. I don't want him. I have to see changes. I was, I'm not doing nothing. I promised myself I'm never going to talk to him. And you know what? He messaged me saying something happened to him. Something transformed. He literally said he saw me in my perspective and he felt how I felt in that moment and it changed things for him y'all it was in that same moment and he realized I think he more realized I think he been realized it but he realized how the connection really was so don't give up don't give up on yourself not even about your twin sure give up on your twin I'm so serious sometimes you just gotta give up on him Give up on them, but don't give up on yourself. Do not give up on yourself. Always work and strive to improve yourself as a person. And that will transform the dynamic completely. And if you're not a twin flame and you're just dealing with a soulmate dynamic, always go for what you desire from your soul. Okay? From your soul. 
always work to better yourself. And the more you better yourself, the higher your vibrations will be. And the higher your vibrations will be, the more you attract and draw in what you want out of a partner. I promise you that, okay? All right, y'all. That's all I got to say in the video. Peace out. Check out the description. Leave a comment, like, and subscribe. And I'll see y'all for the next video. Peace.